back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, yeah, man, how you doing? Did somebody leave? I know you like that. What? The NFL did. And now it's back. Uh, we need, we need a new welcome back song. Show. <laughs> it is September 3rd. 2019 and the NFL is back. It is week one. Kickoff Thursday. Chicago Bears at the Packers. Welcome to the show. Welcome to week one of the NFL season. What's happening, guys? All football is back. It's it's the best time of the year. I was gonna say football is completely back. We got college Saturdays, NFL Sundays, and Thursdays and Mondays, and every other day as they'll add on over the years. Um, but yeah, it's a great time. Fill my weekend with so much football to watch. It's gonna be awesome. It's fantastic. Awesome is an understatement, Joe. Best time of the year. Once the Pistons start rolling around, basketball starts coming around too. That's officially the best time of year. Uh, Malik, you're a basketball fan. So. I, football, I agree. Fo- it will still be football. Football time will still be playing. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I won't football. care about the Pistons. Yes, Until near the end of you the college football now. season. You say that now, but when Blake drops 60 in opening night, Malik's going to be like, you know what? I think these guys can do it. I can't. Joe, you're excited for football. <laughs> I can't get behind this. Right. It's, it's, it's all yeah. about football. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, months. I like that yeah. Like when I come home from work or something, when basketball starts, I can you know turn it on and just kind of keep it as background. But I won't pay super close attention, yes, until football season is... More or less over. Not cool, guys. All right, let's jump right into it. College football, it's back. Michigan and Michigan State didn't look the best, neither of them. Not the best showing for either out of the gate. Let's start with MSU. They won 28-7 to against Tulsa at East Lansing. Joey, you were once a Michigan State student. For I believe a semester, maybe a year, it's possible. So <laughs> Just I spilling know all the details, huh? You have the ties to the school. Joe, you, got, you were kicked out of Michigan you were State. Plugged in. But we know you hey, still hey, hey, <laughs> Malik, Malik, we don't know if he was kicked out. <laughs> we're not telling that to the people. He was allegedly involved with, with football activities. Whoa, 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 I'm whoa, kidding. whoa. I'm kidding. Sorry, Joe. I didn't mean it for it to go that far. I was just trying to let the people know that you have connections. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but what'd you, th- so what'd you think? I know uh, you and Lewerke are on the phone quite a lot. So not a big fan of Lewerke. Does he know that? I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. Anyways, but what did you see from uh, week one from State? They start, I mean, it was, they had a big second quarter. Their offense did not look good. Their defense looked good, like we expected. Mm-hmm. But again, even, only scoring 28 points against Tulsa, that's a little bit concerning. Yeah, scoring three points in the second half. Their biggest problem still, and I I hoped that they would have looked a little bit better was their running game. And Connor Hayward just he didn't look that good. I don't know if it was the offensive line still, or if it was him not finding the right holes. It's hard to say, but the offense just in general did not look all that great. The defense, although we all know that it was going to be a good defense, I needed to still see it. I guess. Um, and they held Tulsa to negative 73 yards rushing, which is like a record or something, or tied for something, um, which is insane. They, One of the most irritating things in sports to me is when a team ties a record. They mm-hmm. don't pass it. They tie it. I don't know why it's such a – it's something that grinds my gears as a sports fan. Yeah, I got you. Um, so their defense definitely looked good. Uh, Kenny Willicks is a monster for that team. I think he – he, get, he recovered both the fumbles, I think, that uh, Tulsa coughed up. So their defense really isn't a problem. It's it's definitely still the offense, and you would have hoped to have seen a little more from the offense coming into this game. Uh, but hopefully part of that is just, you know, rusty week one. Sometimes that happens. I think, I think that's kind of what happened with Michigan a little bit, too, that we'll talk about. But overall, a decent start. Next week, this week, they have uh, Western coming up. So hopefully they can continue to do what they do. Um, But a lot of these early games, I think, with the competition that they're playing against, their defense will mostly just carry them through these games. We did get the new uh, AP poll 
released. State dropped to 19, and we'll talk about Michigan's ranking once we get to Michigan. Malik, uh, what did you see from MSU this weekend? And then also I want your reaction. Do you think it was right for them to drop to 19? Yeah, uh, like he said, everybody expected the defense to be great. They returned almost everybody. And they have some pre early preseason All-American favorites like Ryan Willekes. Joe Bocci is a monster linebacker. Antoine Simmons was a star in that game. And their safeties are very good. And they did their job. They controlled the line. The front seven was vicious. The secondary was pretty good. They gave up a few big plays later on, but it happens to every team. But, yeah, that, that offensive line, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe maybe he's slightly losing his touch on the recruiting in on the offensive line. It seems like – it almost seems like they're just not as, like, up to Big Ten talent almost. Like, they they just aren't it's, – it's, it's hard to put down exactly what it is with that offensive line. Sometimes it looks like they're not – it's not like they're not talented enough. Sometimes it looks like they're just not physical enough. It's it's a mystery. And then I always thought Connor Hayward was more of a fullback than a running back. He's he's a talented guy that can run the ball, but I think you can only do so much with him. And I honestly, it, I think it's starting to look like they might not have a go-to guy at receiver this season like they've had yeah. the past five or six years. There was always that one guy that you, that you could go to. The past few years it's been um, uh, the guy do with the dreads. I forgot his name tall receiver i think his last name was davis felton davis yeah felton yeah davis. felton davis has been that guy that could go up and get it and make spectacular plays when they needed to the past few seasons and other guys have showed signs of being really good but yeah from the start i mean sometimes guys had trouble getting open lewerke lewerke being healthy really helped in this game because he was able to scramble and get first downs he used his legs a lot in this game and that was a positive thing to see but, yeah, Lewerke looked okay. The receivers looked eh. Right. And, yeah, it is. And it's, I th- I'm pretty sure they gave uh, Connor Hayward about 14 touches. So, like, it wasn't that they didn't give him the ball. They gave him, gave him plenty of chances. He just didn't get it done. And, yeah. again, part of it is the offensive line. My one hope, I think, is that um, maybe Ladarius Jefferson can get in there a little bit more and get more touches from Hayward. He's more he's more electric, but we right. haven't seen enough from him. Right, and that's kind of what I want to see if Hayward continues to not be able to produce. Um, because of the offensive line, Ladarius Jefferson might be able to make more plays out of nothing. Um, so I, I think going forward, that could be a, a way that they could maybe get something going in the ground. What do you guys think of the number 19 ranking? I think it's... It's fair, honestly. I mean, I a lot of people expected them to come out hot because they returned so much, and this was this is on schedule for another ten win season, like they always do. But from this first game, it's it's clear that they still have their offensive issues. The defense is still great. It's still an off balance. So, yeah. Even though preseason rankings really don't matter, and the first right. few weeks of pre- rankings really don't matter, they don't look like a top fifteen team at the moment. So yeah. it's fair. They look decent for a week one against a Tulsa team that's not that great. Okay, next week, MSU plays Western. What can we expect from that matchup? Do we see MSU maybe taking a step forward, progressing progressing as the season progresses, or do you see more of the same struggle, more offensive line issues? Western is a better team than Tulsa, so are we going to see maybe their weaknesses spotlighted more? Michigan State has to show some progress next week Mm -hmm. because – Western has some talent on offense. Levante Bellamy is one of the best group of five running backs in the country. He's super fast, and when he gets through the hole, he can take off and go six, 70, 80 yards in just like that. They have a good quarterback. They have good, fast, wide receivers. That defense has to be spot on. They're expected to. But Western could break a few plays, and if they start off fast, things could look kind of scary. To start the game, although I expect Michigan State's defense to come out and be as nasty as they usually are, but Lewerke, come on, Dan D'Antonio, you got to hit some deep passes, get the get the fans into it, get the offense hype, give give people a reason to be excited for this team, get get out to like a twenty one nothing start, get some big plays, run some exciting plays, don't just go run up the middle, run up the middle, and then a play action pass. Don't be vanilla. 
try to b- blow them out mm-hmm. and show people that Michigan State has a breathing pulse of an offense. Right. Yeah, so, I kind of just echo that. Like, I'm pretty sure that, like I said, most of these early games, the Michigan State's just going to win these games off of their defense alone. And like Malik said, Western has a really good running back, but that's also what Michigan State thrives on in defense is stopping the running game. So I don't think that there'll be a concern there, but I just need to see more from their offense, just like Malik said. They just, I don't know if it's they need to take more chances on certain plays or yeah, open up the playbook. Should right. show, th- show some things you haven't shown. Right. Yeah. Um, take some chances, which, I mean, D'Antonio doesn't really shy away from taking chances. He, he's one of those guys similar to a Sean Payton that'll go for fourth down plays. But he he saves them for specific times right. when people don't see them coming. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, mostly we just need to see progression with the offense. That's, that's like the biggest concern for this team. They're going to have a couple games where they can figure that out. Um, but their competition isn't necessarily that easy either, so they can't let up necessarily their defense needs to stay straight on point because they're going to need to win some of these early games I think and now let's progress towards uh, Michigan last weekend they played middle Tennessee they won 40 to 21 again another not great showing for Michigan to start the year I think I remember them doing the same last year as well I could be totally wrong Malik you'll correct me on that Uh, what did you see from them this past weekend what do they need to work on going into next week, which you have called a trap game for Michigan versus Army. What do you think? Well, honestly, I think the turnovers was really the thing that started out this game and made it the way it was that made it uneasy at times because if Shea Patterson doesn't fumble on that first play, if LaVert Hill doesn't fumble that punt, I don't think Middle Tennessee scores more than 10 points in that game because they the, the two touchdowns they scored – Besides the the weird one at the end, the last 21, it was two touchdowns off of turnovers. They got momentum, and they took off. So without that momentum, I don't think Middle Tennessee would have really gained that much confidence. So you're just, not as concerned as other people are? I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not crazy concerned. I think that the turnovers were the biggest thing for me. Okay. They, they were sloppy. Yeah. And in the first game, being sloppy isn't a surprise. But they, they definitely have to get it cleaned up. And, of course, there are some things I'm concerned about. There were some drops by the receivers that could have been touchdowns. Uh, the O-line is expected to be one of the best in over 10 years. They kind of looked still just okay at times. Again, that could have been they are going to play Middle Tennessee, so they maybe didn't bring their A game. It's possible, but come on. Again, that's an to, excuse, though. Yeah, they, they got to bring it every time. And they they're replacing a lot of stars on defense and it's it kind of shows I think the the talent level has somewhat gone down slightly losing Rashawn Gary and Devin Bush absolute stars all American level players you still have some young t- exciting guys like Aiden Hutchinson you had Vincent Gray starting that corner he played even better than I expected and Ambry Thomas played really good in his first game as a starter but yeah just young guys getting acclimated you got to clean up the sloppy stuff Josh Gaddis, this is his first time ever being an offensive coordinator. So we do, we really don't fully know what his scheme is. We don't know how he's going to attack the rest of the season. It's going to be new things we're seeing all season long. And I'm not surprised he didn't completely open up the playbook in this game. But, I mean, Shea Patterson threw three straight touchdown passes on three straight drives and looked clean in those drives. And, of course, he, sh- he showed flaws. Every quarterback shows flaws. Trevor Lawrence threw two picks in the first half of his game. Every quarterback doesn't just go perfect every game, but a lot of Michigan fans are annoying me. Why and is that? And kind of, kind of based off of this game. A lot of people people are building up a quarterback controversy because they want either Dylan McCaffrey or Joe Milton to surpass Shea. And they, I think people are being really unfair to Shea. He doesn't have... He's not as big as them. He may not have the crazy, I mean, the more talent than them. But as you saw in that game and in games last year, he gets the job done. He's an accurate passer when he's on. Of course, he misses some passes, yeah. Sometimes he runs out too long, gets sacked, loses yards. What quarterback doesn't? That happens. But you saw those three touchdown passes. It was clean. Some receivers dropped passes. Things happen. It is what it is. And it's it's not really that much better since – 
Jim Harbaugh is playing Dylan McCaffrey more now because he's that talented. So we'll see what happens. It's I think it's going to be a kind of annoying season to me because I I feel like there are going to be times where every quarterback has bad stretches or a bad game or two. Whenever Shea Patterson has a bad game or bad stretches, people are going to start booing, and it's just it's it's not necessary. It really isn't. But yeah, it's they just little things they got to clean up. Stop the yeah. turnovers. Yeah, defense is still learning things, and yeah. Zach Charbonnet, give him more carries. True freshman, he looks like a stud. He was eight carries, 90 yards or something. Like He looks yep. solid. Broke off a 40, 41 yarder. He has the size. He has deceptive speed. He has deceptive elusiveness. He needs like 15, 16 carries, maybe more. Joe, what did you see? Um, Pretty much the same thing Malik said. Um, Because I didn't, wa- I didn't finish watching this game. I was at Buffalo Wild Wings. And uh, we started oh. to watch it. And Did you get the boneless wings? No, traditional. Classic. Who are you? I'm just kidding. <laughs> traditional wings are cool. What's Oh, wait, wait, wait. What sauce? Honey barbecue. All right. I approve. Continue. Wing stuff <clears throat> is better. Anyway. Well, Malik, we are not bringing that type Conti- of fire into your, the studio uh, right now. Sir. But so <laughs> I kind of saw this final score, and I'm sure this is what a lot of people think is that you see 40 to 21, you're like, what the heck happened? Like, how does Middle Tennessee score 21 points against Michigan? And like Malik said, it ended up just being turnovers. Like, the score looks worse than it actually was. Um, it's still concerning, but those 21 points were mostly turnovers, like Malik said. Yeah, it's nothing they can't fix. When it, it, it was in, like, an actual um, full drive, Michigan's defense seemed to do fine. Um the one thing that I was talking to Malik about too before we started was that I thought it was interesting how much Michigan used Dylan McCaffrey in a lot of different ways. Um, he w- he threw a couple passes. He had about eight carries, I think, um, for the team. And then he had like one reception for a yard or something. But I think it's really interesting how um, Michigan has utilized him in this offense alongside Shea Patterson. I kind of like that, um, using somewhat of a, a dual threat quarterbacks um, to their advantage. And it just gives them different looks and it can throw teams off because it's not where Dylan McCaffrey is one of those guys that comes in and you know that he's going to run it every time because he has a good arm and he can throw it well, that there's some college programs that you're like, oh, this guy's coming in, they're definitely just doing a direct snap to the quarterback and he's going to go run or do something or some crazy handoff or something like that. Um, so I like that it, it it's opening their playbook. And like Malik said, I'm curious to see what else they have in their playbook that they might try to do as the uh, season goes on. But overall, it was a decent first game. Uh, this week is same as how Michigan State talent gets a little bit better. They're going to play Army. A little bit of a tougher team. Although Army only beat Rice fourteen to seven, so we'll see what happens. Right, right. I mean, they, Army, they could they could come into Michigan with more intensity. It, mm-hmm. It's possible. Well, yeah. Right. According to ESPN, Michigan is favored by twenty three and a half. Uh, they're giving Army a three point eight percent chance to win this game. I'm sure Appalachian State had a one percent chance. They probably had less maybe than a yeah 1%. less. I'm, yeah, so I'm sure it was like point two point one one one. Yeah. Um. But any anything else you guys want to see Michigan improve on going into Army next week, this week? Just clean it up. Have yeah, no. no tur- I don't want to see stupid turnovers next game. Yeah. I mean, people fumble, but as we see, fumbles hurt. They swing transition. I mean, not transition momentum. And take Levert Hill off of punt returns. He's he's our number one corner. I don't know why he's the starting punt returner. They're freshmen that could are probably better more better punt returners that could be out there don't put your starting corner out there as the punt returner clearly he's not that experienced at it. you would also think that there's they have so many like solid running backs in their depth chart that you could throw one of those yeah, guys there out there true freshman receivers you could throw out there so so yeah. many other options yeah right i agree and it did come out that michigan is now ranked number seven in the country uh initial reaction nothing yeah, no, that yeah. doesn't yeah, really it means matter. nothing yeah, Nothing there's, only, at all. there's only little slips and slides early on in the season. It's not that big of a deal. All right. And you guys, so you guys watched all of week one, 
college football. I know Joey was at Buffalo Wild Wings, so he didn't catch everything. But what was the highlight of this past weekend in college football for you? Well, I I had two big takeaways from this opening weekend. And first of all, the freshman QBs, there are so many young guys. We're in an era where it's not that hard for a young guy to come in and play well from the start because guys have so many years of high school offenses are being updated. You play, you go and play against the top players in the country at camps month in, month out during the summer. It's just constant, constant, constant reps, learning new offenses, playing quarterback nonstop. So when these young guys come in, a lot of guys can play really good off the start. And just just a list of guys that started in week one, Hank Bachmeyer, Boise State, he beat Florida State. Bo Nix, Auburn, they beat Oregon. Sam Howe, North Carolina, they beat South Carolina. Jaden Daniels, Arizona State, they won. Max Duggan, TCU, who split uh, snaps for, for them, but they won. Ryan Halinski is going to start at South Carolina now since Jake Bentley is hurt. And Caden Slovis is going to start at USC now since JT Daniels got hurt. So there's they're starting true freshmen all over the place. It's at an all-time high almost at this point, and it's going to be really interesting to see going on from here. And the disappointing losses mostly from the SEC, were just jaw-dropping. I mean, South Carolina has an insanely tough schedule. Yeah, that one they was were, they a were big suppo- surprise. To me, it's, it's the most disappointing of the weekend to me. They, North Carolina is a game they had to win because you're a good team, aren't you, South Carolina? You're better than first-year coach Mac Brown in a right. building North Carolina, but they lose to a true freshman quarterback. Mm-hmm. Big disappointment. Missouri loses, loses at Wyoming, which – Playing at Wyoming is tougher than people realize. That's a weird environment to play in. Them scheduling that was eh. Ole Miss lost to Memphis. They're still building in Tennessee. Poor old <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> they they didn't just lose to Georgia State. They got handled by a team that finished last in the Sun Belt last season. 2-10 Georgia State went into Rocky Top and just played with them. Known as a basketball it, program. Man, I, I texted a whole bunch of my Tennessee friends after that. <laughs> one. It was a, a lot of t- Tennessee fans and a lot of Tennessee like football analysts are saying that's the worst loss in Tennessee football history. Mm. And a lot of people don't know like exactly where the where do they go from there? Since this was this is supposed to be an improving team this year, we'll see how the rest of the schedule goes. But what what a what a start! <laughs> yeah, what a start, Joey. Um, I would say the Boise State game. Was pretty crazy. Their quarterback looks tough, real good, tough, smart. Uh, I know he's gotten a lot of talk already, but that was a cool game. Um, we kind of highlighted it as the game of the week: Oregon versus Auburn. That was a good game. I was very surprised how Auburn came out and played, and Oregon just didn't seem like they were entirely ready for it. And yeah, Oregon was my dark horse this year, and they are already failing. So. <laughs> Well, this is just one game. I mean, I know, but yeah, still, they can still be all right. you like I said before, I thought that you know you have Justin Herbert coming back for a senior season, and he goes up against a true freshman uh, quarterback at Auburn. You thought hmm, maybe there's an advantage there, but it it didn't really matter, and kind of goes to what Malik was talking about: how a lot of these young guys are they're ready to go. They're they're built up from a young age, and you know you see it in NBA too, where. You just get these young guys that come in and are ready to go. So, uh, good first week of college football. Also, Jalen Hurts. I was just going to say, I was just about to bring up Jalen Hurts. There's some transfer QBs that balled out yeah. in their first games. Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields, Jacob Eason. Yeah. yeah guys, I was going to make, sure we, up, off was gonna make sure we brought up Jalen Hurts before we transitioned off because he had a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know... There's really a favorite for Heisman this year, but Jalen Hurts might be able to put himself in the conversation. Yeah, he I mean, definitely will. Yeah. He won't be able to keep this up, but I mean, as long as he's putting up touchdowns and numbers, he's definitely going to put his name in there. All right, guys, it's week one of the NFL, best time of the year, and my favorite segment on the show. I have a question before we. Get get into these these picks. It's the NFL. It's the views from the sidelines. Pick a winner. Week one. What is your question, Malik? Before we get started, 
Uh, can, can we get a quick recap of what happened last year? Oh, I think I eliminated can we... myself mid-season. <laughs> yeah, Chris wasn't really a... Joey is the reigning Chris champion. wasn't really a challenger in that. I think I only beat Malik, too, by a couple picks. Reigning champ, Joey, we will start you off with the pick. You are the champ. Should we, we, get, a, should we get a trophy this year? I think there's got to the be a trophy. I think there's got to be a podcast least a champ, trophy. At least a championship belt, something. Oh, Ooh, I like that. We should I figure like something belt. out. Yeah. yeah, there's going to be something. The winner's getting something this year. So let's jump right into it. Week one, Joey's on the clock. We're going to start with the Packers at the Bears for Thursday night football, kicking off the NFL season. Joey, what do you like? What do you don't like? Who are you picking? Coming out with a banger right away. Aaron Rodgers on redemption this year. I'm going with Green Bay. Joey's locking in Green Bay, and then we're going to shoot some second place from the 2018 season, Malik Hill. I am also going to take Green Bay. Uh, like he said, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to ball out. I think the weeks after this, there there still might be some struggles because that's a very young receiving core. But I think this week one, with this new coach, Matt LaFleur, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have something to prove of I can get along with a coach. We can coexist. This system works, and I can still play at the highest level in the system. The Chicago Bears defense could make some plays. Khalil Mack is going to get his sacks, of course. I think Mr. Trubisky will still show some struggles, and I think it'll take a little bit of time for David Montgomery to really get going as a really good NFL running back. And this is where I take my first lead. <laughs> I'm taking the Bears. I mean, you guys are sleeping on it. The Bears were fantastic last year. One of the better defenses. Mitch Trubisky, another year under his belt. Solid offense built around him. You guys are just falling under the Aaron Rodgers hype. I don't think they have an offense around them. Hold that thought. Give me the Bears. Week one, Chris takes a 1-0 lead. The Bears. Uh, Next up, it's the Washington Redskins at the Philadelphia Eagles. We're shooting to you, Joe. What do you see in this one? Oh, I wrote mine down in a different order. Okay. Uh, Philadelphia. I think Washington's just got too many issues going on. I think they're going to be a not very good team. They're going to have quarterback controversy, I think, all year. Case Keenum, Dwayne Haskins. Who's going to, who's it going to be? They also have uh, Darius Geis, who's coming off of ACL injury. And they have another, they're going to have a bunch of running backs that they could throw out there. And I, th- I think they're just going to have too many question marks. And their defense is decent. So, Malik? Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. I think that, that's a clean sweep. It should be. You haven't seen my sheet yet. Until, just kidding. Until I'm the thinking. Dwayne Haskins experiment begins, I don't think people are really going to be putting any stock in the fit into Washington. Yeah, I got Philly. Uh, I like Carson Wentz this year. I think he bounces back. Uh, Philly's got a solid core. Give me Philly. And they're at home, which I think in the NFL plays a factor. Our third matchup, my my team, not the Bills, Joey's team, the Bills, versus the New York Jets. Le'Veon Bell making his debut for the Jets. Sam Darnold. Where, where's the game? It's in New York. Okay. Uh, Joey. Are you risky enough to take the Bills? Or of course are you- I am. The Bills are without Nathan Peterman. Are you kidding me? The Bills are ready to go. And there's Joey's they first have, wrong pick. I have a bright young running back in uh, Devin Singletary. You really have them beating the Yeah. Oh, okay. We're ready to go. Joe's, Joey's back to getting on his hot take Josh, grind. <laughs> Josh Allen is, you know, he's got another year under his belt as well. I like how you didn't finish that sentence. Josh Allen is that running back. Under- <laughs> that running back situation's looking really good right now. Frank Gore, what is he? Forty eight. No, they have Devin starting? Singletary. <laughs> Gore's getting starting reps. You putting a lot of no. you putting a lot Singletary. of stock into Devin Singletary, Singletary from the start. Singletary is going to start. Um, Gore, to Gore, and- Gore's going to be a change of pace. Um, yeah. Okay. They got some young receivers. Yeah, that's their defense. Cool. Their defense is solid. I'm not sure if that's gonna beat these Jets. <sighs> All right, we'll see. Sammy D. We'll see. Robert Ackley. Yeah, we'll, I'm, we'll I'm going. See. I'm going with the Jets. Give me the Jets. Yeah. Easy pick. That's gonna the be Jets, a blowout. The Jets better win that game. That's Dude, all. That's what I'll say. It's gonna be a blowout. They, they need I to mean, win it. At home, Le'Veon might rush for 200 yards. He might. No. I'd like four so touchdowns. The Bills' defense is better okay, than three. that. Okay, three. Maybe three. I was, now, you, now you're just shooting right, for the two, stars. Two touchdowns, 175 yards. I could see. The Bills' That's defense possible. is better than their offense. And Le'Veon is going to run through them. Okay. Remember last year when the Bills beat the Vikings and it made no sense? I'm still taking That's the Jets. I'm one. still taking the Jets. Uh, the Bills on. are a gritty team. 
The <laughs> Atlanta team. Falcons at the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this is, I think, our first... I mean, well, Packers-Bears is interesting. But this is another interesting matchup, Joey. Going with Atlanta. I need these NFC North teams to start losing right away so the Lions can get there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Malik. Um, but no. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Go for it, Joe. Atlanta's always one of those teams that they play good during the regular season. Um, and they just put up numbers. I think Minnesota's going to play a little conservative to start. Um, with Delvin Cook being uh, healthy, I think they're going to they're gonna really try to run the ball a lot. Um, but I just think Atlanta still has too many weapons. Has any news come out about Anybody on Atlanta's offense being hurt? Not Is that, everybody healthy? Not yet. Yeah, everyone's healthy. Everybody healthy? Yeah. I'm taking Falcons week one. Julio Jones, Devontae yeah. Freeman. I, I, I trust that offense to to put up some points, even against the vaunted Vikings defense. I think the – Make it a clean yeah. sweep. I'm also and Adam, taking And Adam Thielen being questionable too. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to take Atlanta. Uh, we got Ravens at the Miami Dolphins. Joey. Ooh, that's a rough one. Two of my favorite teams. They're going Baltimore. They're ready – they're ready this year. I'm I'm a big believer in the Ravens. Fitz Magic does not have the pieces he had last year in Tampa Bay. I don't think Albert Wilson is going to slash this Ravens defense. So you're going Baltimore. Impressive game from Lamar Jackson. And we are all going Baltimore. That's an easy one for all of us. Next up, Kansas City Chiefs reigning MVP Patrick Mahomes at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Joseph. Hmm. I'm pretty sure Kansas City is going to come out. Pretty sure. So there's some doubt there. Let's talk this out for a second. I think, I think talk this out, just Jim. because of how well Kansas City played last season, I think people are going to have very high expectations. I don't know if they're going to live up to that necessarily. I don't think Patrick Mahomes is going to have quite the season that he had last year. I still think he'll have a very good season. Um, but I just don't think Jacksonville has enough. They, they like had their short little moment, and I think it's already over, or I'm not really sure what Jacksonville is going to do. They have Nick Foles, D.D. Westbrook as their number one receiver. Problem is Leonard Fournette, I never know what's going to happen. Like He's, he's been so up and down recently. Um, it's kind of hard to trust him, so I think Kansas City should win this game. I'm going to go Jacksonville in a shocker. That's what I was going to say. I, I feel like there's a possibility for an upset here. I think I'm for, not going to take it. I you think Fournette is going to be locked in this first game. I think Nick Foles hit some deep passes. I don't think that defense plays their butts off. Yeah, I got Kansas City in this one. I, I, I agree with Joe. I don't think Patrick Mahomes is going to have as good of a year as he did last year, but I still think he's going to be very, very good in, in the MVP discussion. And they have just too many weapons, in my opinion. Of course, football's crazy. You could see an upset. Uh, Tennessee Titans at the Cleveland Browns. People, Some people are picking the Browns for the Super Bowl this year. Joey, are you picking the Browns to win week one? No. I'm picking the Titans. You are picking. Why are you picking Marcus Mariota? Give me your reasoning, please. I think Tennessee is another one of those teams last year that they just, they fought in a lot of games and they just had random victories. And I think the Browns are a little bit overhyped. And I would love to see Titans win the first week and shut up all the Cleveland fans. Whoa. (laughs) Whoa, Joseph. So, yeah, um, I don't know. I think Mariota still has a chance to be good. I think there's he still has signs, but he's just so inconsistent. Um, I don't know. And I, th- I think Tennessee's defense is a little bit underrated. So, I'm going with it. You got to make some hot takes here. Cleveland by 100. I'm oh, just kidding. Cle- it's Cleveland. Cleveland by, like, 35. <laughs> no, I got Cleveland as well. I mean, I don't think this is very a very tough matchup for them. They're playing at home. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of hype behind it. This is a this is a tone setter. This is a tone setter. I agree with Malik completely. Give me the Browns. I think they win this one handily. Uh, moving on, Rams at the Carolina Panthers. What are we thinking, Joe? Hmm. Cam is playing, isn't he? Yes. Okay. Well, he's listed as questionable. Still sounds like it's, he's just gonna be listed as questionable till they till kick off. But I think he's playing. I think Carolina's gonna uh, catch the Rams off guard. How many upsets really? you going with this really? week? <laughs> going with Carolina. Wow. Mm-hmm. I think Cam Newton's going to have a bounce back. I, I do too. I agree with you on that, but I'm not picking Carolina in week one. But I don't think DJ Moore and Chris Hogan will explode from week one. I think it'll take time for him to build more chemistry with them. Christian McCaffrey is going to do what he does, but I think that Ram that Rams offense 
is going to get their points when they need them. I think it could be a close game. It could be close, but I think the Rams win. Maybe they win by a touchdown. But the Rams win. Yeah. And that's where I'm at as well. Uh, Jared Goff, Todd Gurley, how much firepower does that team have? And they have a very solid defense. Yes, I think Carolina's going to have a good year this year, but it's a lot to handle week one with less of – not as much chemistry with his core receivers. Uh, moving on, Bengals at Seattle. A lot of hype going into Seattle late. Now, are you buying the hype, Joe? A little bit. I just think Cincinnati's just going to be not good. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. And I think Seattle, you know, with Russell Westbrook, Westbrook, <laughs> Russell Wilson being a veteran on this team, um, I think he's he's done a great job of rallying a lot of young guys that he has on this team now. Um, they just added Jadavian Clowney. I think, I think they're ready to go. Their defense obviously isn't what it once was, but it's still very good. And I think that their offense – can be solid. They need to figure out their running back thing. I think Chris Carson has kind of become that answer, um, but we don't know for sure yet. And I just think Cincinnati just has too many issues going on. I think like, Russell Wilson has the most efficient day of week one. Something like like 23 or 28, 275 and three touchdowns, something like that. I think it's going to be a clean day, not many worries. He's just going to hit what's open. Yeah. Seattle? Yeah, and it's a clean sweep. Seattle for me as well. Uh, I think this is going to be an easier one. Just Bengals are a mess. There's they, nothing they much there. They have Joe Mixon, so they're going to run the ball a lot. Yeah, Joe, Joe but, could get over 100 yards. He, I think he's he's going to have a lot of 100-yard rushing games this season probably. Yeah. Do you Are you guys behind that O-line, though? Do you think the O-line is going to give him enough protection, enough? That's that's going to play a huge I, role I, in his effectiveness Well, he. I think there's also a chance he could have some nagging injuries that yeah. add up and he could miss some games near the end of the year. Because he's gonna get punished a lot, he's gonna he's gonna break off some big runs, but he he'll also get hit in the backfield or only have one or two yard runs. But where they, he gets hit hard. They too. do have Giovanni Bernard though backing him up, who's been a solid backup and even a starter at one point. So I think they'll be able to mix up the touches enough. But there's just too many question marks and holes on this team overall. Talking about question marks, the Indianapolis Colts are next up at the L.A. Chargers. Anybody riding the Brissett train and picking them week one after a shocking announcement? I think there's too much lingering, in my opinion. That's a big thing to handle for a locker room going into week one. I think we're going to see them start off slow, as much as maybe you guys think Brissett's going to have a good year and bounce back and help that team. I'll start the, start us off and go Chargers in a blowout. Yeah, I, I don't think the Colts start off very good. I think the Chargers win by, like, Two touchdowns, maybe like maybe two touchdowns and a field goal. It could be like a thirty-eight, like seventeen game, maybe. I think the Colts score a few touchdowns. They look good at times, but yeah, I think the Chargers are just better overall. Joey, um, I don't think it's going to be as big of a blowout just because the Chargers do have the question marks themselves with the whole Melvin Gordon controversy stuff. Um, so they're going to have Austin Eckler. Do you guys think Gordon gets traded? Or he ends up just playing for the Chargers. I, th- I don't think he's playing. He won't. I think. Play he, I think he's he's passed because they they already announced that um they're not gonna re-sign or whatever. They're not gonna. They're they're ended contract negotiations. So he has to be traded. And I just I'm not sure if somebody's gonna make the move because then they know that he's gonna want that contract either way. Um. So it might be we might see another Le'Veon Bell season here with Melvin Gordon. Unfortunately. Um, so you're picking the Colts or the Chargers, though? I'm going to pick the Chargers just because of their their defense is still super, super good. And I think Indianapolis will surprise some people. And I think that's mostly because Brissett is a veteran in the league. And he's played with a lot of these guys in this offense before. Um, so now even having more reps, I think I think the Colts will be better than people expect. But in this game, I think the Chargers defense is going to get it done. Uh, and then we have the 49ers at the Buccaneers. Uh, you got to if you got to take crab legs in this situation. I think this is Give my snooze. Sam, I think this is my snooze <laughs> fest of the week. I'm not taking. <laughs> okay. I mean, if if me and Chris weren't Buffalo and you and Jets fans, that would be the snooze fest of the week. I think Garoppolo. I think Garoppolo might make some plays out there. But crab like, legs, like he, like he was playing. expected to last season. 
Yeah, I think he, he has some young, exciting pieces. He has George Kittle out there. I, th- I, th- I think they'll be all right. I'm taking Tampa Bay. So you're taking San Francisco, Malik. Yeah. Joey, I know you're a fan of seafood. He is on my fantasy team. That's a big plus when you're making these decisions. Um, I think Tampa Bay has more weapons on offense. Uh, I think Mike Evans is questionable or something, though. So that's a little bit of a concern. Again, more ways away, though, from... Yeah. Um, Tampa Bay's running game is a little bit messed up, too, at the moment. So I'm not sure. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. I can't trust putting a whole bunch on Jameis Winston anymore. I can't. If if the running game was really good... So you're a lobster guy. But I, I can't take... Oh, yeah, Jameis, you go out there and throw 40 passes. We'll win it. Nah. Not on that one. I, I still think he has potential. He still there. has talent, yeah. Giants at the Cowboys, Joey. As much as I would love to see the Giants win this game. Same. Uh, I, <laughs> Same. I can't see it happening. I like I don't I don't even know. Like is is Eli still starting? I think he is. Someone pick the Giants, please. Um but I just, I don't know. Because Saquon Barkley is like the only guy they got. I guess Evan Ingram. Um, but their defense is not very good. I think just Dallas has too much talent, even though I don't like them. So I'm going to go with Dallas. Same, Malik. The fighting Saquons are not doing it. <laughs> not this week, at least. No. Uh, we'll save this one for the, for the end. Steelers at Patriots. Joey. Hmm. Um, I think the Patriots. I think I'm not very high on the Steelers. Um, like I said, I think I said they were going to be like possibly third in their division, and I think New England is just too good. Even though I don't really care for them, I don't care for either of these teams to be honest. <laughs> um, but you know, I don't care for the Dolphins. Just having Tom or Brady, the Ravens, Tom Brady, and all that. I uh I think they're too good. You said that like this is 2006 and he still has Randy Moss. Yeah. <laughs> you just, he just agreed with it. Yeah. <laughs> they got, they got yeah. Josh Gordon. I'm I'm excited to see Josh Gordon though. Malik, I'm you? excited to see Josh Gordon, but I don't know how he's gonna look. Yeah. Yeah, coming back like this. Also, Demarius Thomas is still a good receiver. I don't know if he's what he was in Denver. Didn't he get cut? Yeah. They I resigned. Think- they resigned him. Oh, they, they cut, cut him. him. They cut they him. Cut him, re- and then resigned him. Yeah, I forgot. You got lucky. There's no <laughs> they, water in that cup. I probably wouldn't have knocked it over. I didn't hit it very hard. But yeah, I, you're right. They cut him to resign him. What? I don't, it's just. I don't know. Uh, I'm going Steelers. You're going Steelers. Yeah, I'm going Steelers. This is my upset pick of the week. I agree with Malik on that one. I uh, feel like the Steelers defense is gonna surprise a lot of people. I think the Patriots won't be explosive from the start. And this is my game of the week coming up. Texans at Saints. I'm extremely excited for this one. This one's going to be good. <sighs> Texans. I'll say it. I think I'm going Saints. I think with the Texans, they just um, traded for Laramie Tunsil. Yeah. And they, they traded also- for Carlos Hyde, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then they also, in the Tunsil deal, they ended up getting Kenny Stills, which I think is a really solid pickup for them. So I think their receiving core... You just like Kenny Stills because he used to play for the Dolphins. He's a solid wide receiver. Would you not agree? I agree. He's solid. okay. Yeah. He's a solid wide receiver. I'm not saying he's the number one guy. He's a solid 6 but, out of 10. But to have DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, and Kenny Stills as a receiving core is very good for Deshaun Watson, I think. Um Duke Johnson's their running back, which is a little bit of a concern, but he's been in the league for a while. He's shown good signs. He's a great pass catcher. Carlos Hyde can take a couple carries. Um, so I think this offense is going to be explosive. Uh, obviously, on the defense, they're always going to be solid. Um, they won't look as good because New Orleans puts up points a lot, too. I think they could take a step back this season, honestly, defensively. Yeah, a little bit. I, I could see that. Um, so I think this is going to be more of a shootout, which is going to be fun. Uh, watching Deshaun Watson and Drew Brees sling it around. Um, but I I don't know. I, I just feel like Houston has a good chance this year to do something. Malik? Michael Thomas got that bag. 
I think he's going to show out game one, 11, 12 catches, maybe a touchdown or two. I think Drew Brees throws for over 300, Saints win. Same here, I got the Saints by maybe a field goal or a touchdown. I think it's going to be really close, really exciting game. Um, two teams with Super Bowl aspirations. It'll be a fun one. And it's Monday night. They lead it, kicks off Monday night football. I also think Deshaun Watson throws a couple of picks because of New Orleans pressure yeah. and him developing chemistry with the new guys in the receiving core. Next up, the Broncos at the Raiders. Oh, this might be the snooze. <laughs> yeah. This right here. This could be the snooze. <laughs> I'm taking the Broncos because I just don't I don't trust the Raiders. I, I want to see Gruden lose you trust? his first game. <laughs> You know, like, I like Gruden. I like Gruden, but I want to see how they respond. So you're a Flacco man is what you're telling me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe I should think about my answer. <laughs> He's a Flacco man. Budenholzer guy and Flacco man, Chris Pappas. <laughs> Not a Flacco guy. Let's get that I'm going. Straight. I don't know. Well, hold on. Let me think about this now. You guys this, yeah, I started thinking too. <laughs> this. Denver has some good pieces on defense. The defense is really good, yeah. and the and I really am slightly concerned with Oakland's offense. Re- Denver's so I defense think is rebuilding too. Denver's defense. I mean offense. Yeah, Denver's I know offense it's is, all, yeah, pretty much. But rebuilding. so is Oakland's, and Denver's defense is so good. I think this is a game that the Broncos could win, scoring fourteen points. And that's why I'm going Broncos, and that's why I'm going Broncos. I had to work that um, out in my head. Going Raiders week one because I do not think. Joe Flacco would do that much. I'm a Flacco guy, and I'm going with the Raiders. Oh. I don't know why. Tell me you're a Flacco guy just for that Super Bowl run. Don't say the rest of his career. <laughs> maybe his like, first like five seasons, maybe. But I, I think Derek Carr is going to have a bounce back here, I think. And I, possible. I think, obviously, with having Antonio Brown, that'll help him. Um, I don't know. And then they have a run, young running back who could – be something, Josh Jacobs. Uh, so we'll have to see. But, yeah, I'm not super excited. I probably won't watch this game, I'll be honest. All right. Lions at the Cardinals. We're all somewhat higher up on the Lions than we expected going into this year. Joey, I'm going to start with you. We all know what you're picking, but give us some reasoning. Give us what you're excited for or something. Kyler Murray. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not going to lie. It's really? the exact same situation as last year with the Jets. Yeah, rookie, but it's rookie the Jets. quarterback. Yeah, but this time it's not Sam Darnold. It's Kyler Murray. Sam Darnold's better. You shouldn't be. You should be less concerned. <sighs> Since he's going into his second year, he's technically right. But thank you. Kyler's more talented. I'm saying comparing Sam Darnold last year. Yeah. Going in, you're like, oh, I'm playing a guy named Sam Darnold. Hmm? It's, it's the Jets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it should be an easy win, and they get blown out. Um, so I think it's really similar. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I think. I think if the Lions can get this run-heavy offense going, that'll free up a lot of pressure for Matthew Stafford. And I think he has a solid receiving core. Galladay is expected to make uh, big strides this year. Marvin Jones has been great. Um, we got multiple tight ends that can do things. TJ Hawkinson has been impressing a lot of people. Um, so hopefully we can get him involved early on. I think the defense has made... Big jumps, and they should be back to being a solid defense. Like I, th- I think I keep kind of saying, at least top fifteen defense. I would hope. Um, so I'm almost leaning on the defense to do well in this game, and I'm hoping that Kyler Murray, you know, has a little bit of rust in his first full game. He's looked pretty decent in the preseason, um, but hopefully, when he gets into a full game, he'll struggle a little bit. I want him to do good but not in this game. So are you locking in? Yeah. Lions. Mm-hmm. All right, Malik, what about you? I think Kyler Murray is going to show signs of his great talent. I think he, always, I think he's also going to make some big rookie mistakes. That big arm, he's going to throw some passes that make people scratch their heads. Straight to big play slay. <laughs> but he's also going to break – he might break a few, like, 30-yard runs. This should be a game – the Lions won't. The Lions See, win. That's the ones that I hate to say. They should. So you're picking the Lions. Second year under Patricia, I think they're. I think they're a better team so than they were last year. So you're year. picking the Lions. I'm going to pick the Lions. 
Me because, too, and that's a yeah, clean sweep. The Cardinals aren't aren't a very good team. And I think if we look back, I, on our and history, I think the Lions are a better team, but they're the Lions, so it's it's possible. If we look, but back, the Lions should win. If we look back at our history from last year, every time we picked a clean sweep, usually we were wrong. So this is not a good sign for the Lions going into Week One. If you're a betting person, maybe to put some money down on the Cardinals. Um, we have a lot of similar picks here, Week One. Oh, uh, let's see here. I want to count how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six similar picks. So there's ten games up for grabs in week one for someone to take a lead out. I think you just counted off the number of picks Sam Darnold is going to throw in his first game. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Dang. Malik. Now let's hope it's six touchdowns. Let's wow. hope it's six touchdowns. Uh, but that'll do it for our NFL talk. We'll break this all down again next week. Weekly NFL picks are back. We'll keep you updated with the schedule, updated with the records, uh, and it'll be fun. It'll be fun that I am not down 25 picks in one week where I'm just out of it. At least, hopefully not. I think um, I took the most chances this week, actually. You took, you, you yeah. were for a lot of upsets. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um. Let's Looking touch on a few things before five. we wrap up the show. I took five. Uh, big three MVP, Joe Johnson. He also hit the game winner. Uh, he is trying to make an NBA comeback. He is working out for the Brooklyn Nets, the Milwaukee Bucks, and your Detroit Pistons this week uh, for a training camp deal. If you remember, Joe Johnson was a Pistons killer uh, when he was playing with the Nets and the Hawks. What is it? Is this what does this say about the big three? What does this say about Joe Johnson? And what does this say about the Pistons that they're interested, Joey? Um, I mean, I think it shows that Joe Johnson still has the talent. Uh, I know he didn't really. That's not why he went to the big three was to make an NBA comeback. But I think when he realized that he still has talent, which I thought he did when he was last seen in what Houston, um that he still could have gotten more minutes and he could have been a little bit more of a contributing factor for certain teams. And I know that he had said that losing in Houston in the playoffs was rough for him, so he wanted to make another a run at something. Um, so I, I feel like he'll most likely look to go to a contender, so I would assume that he, he's more likely to go to the Bucks. I think it's cool that the Pistons are going to get a tryout with him. I would love for him to be on the Pistons. Would you get a Joe Johnson jersey? I might consider it. Um, would you get a jo- Joe Johnson jersey or a Derrick Rose jersey? Probably Joe Johnson because everybody's going to have Derrick Rose. Um, especially if they come out with a teal one. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I'd like to see it. Um, I like seeing him in the league. One of my favorite players. But I just don't I don't know if he'll be. I don't think he'll be the Pistons. But it'd be cool. Be cool. Malik? Sell tickets. Sign Joe Johnson and sell tickets. Get those sellouts. Give people a reason to come if you're not going to contend for even a conference championship. Sign this man. Put him in whenever your team is down he, so he can get buckets, make people cheer. Get the eighth seed. We're good. Uh, and, some- and sign Carmelo. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Melo, his camp is aggressively pursuing contract. Brooklyn Clippers and the Lakers are said to be teams maybe thinking about that. Um, before we uh, leave for the day, some breaking news into the studio. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott's agent is flying to Dallas right now with sources saying that the, two, the team and Zeke are very close on agreeing to a deal. Does that surprise you? Not really. No, yeah. You guys kind of expected it? Yeah, I figured that eventually it would have to get done. I mean, he's one of the best running backs in the league, and this is like their last chance. I think that has to be done today, and and he can play week one, um, something like that. He can practice and then play week one. Um, So I'm not super surprised. I think Dallas is in a place where they can't mess around with Elliott. I think they're they're in a... a spot where they can make some moves with the they're like big three of Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, and they need Ezekiel Elliott. So I think I, I'm pretty sure they just have to get it done. I'm, I'm not surprised they need him, but I, I'm just so annoyed by Ezekiel Elliott at this point. Um, he's he's still just so immature. He does something every off season 
Like, the one time when they go to a on an away game, he's always spotted doing something he shouldn't be doing. Like, I, I don't know why he can't just sit down <laughs> to think about football and just get ready for a game. Why well, it, it's it's so extra. And too much drama. Too much drama. Mm-hmm. Too much drama. But we know Jerry Jones like the, likes the drama. I was going to say he plays for he Dallas. He takes on the players that like, yes. That's what he's about. Well, that's going to do it for the show this week. Uh, make sure to tune in. You got MSU. You got Michigan. You got the Lions this weekend. You got all the NFL Week 1 excitement. Week 2 of college football season. Tons of stuff we'll be talking about next week. Excited to get back to it. Best time of the year, like Malik said. We will see you guys next time. Go Bills. Watch Kyler Murray pick apart the Lions. Stop it. Watch it. 300 plus yards, 100 rushing yards. He's going to light it up.